<clears throat> Happy NEC New Year and welcome inside the home office and welcome back to a brand new season of NEC women's basketball on the run. I'm Craig D'Amico. You know, this year I made a New Year's resolution to stop procrastinating, but I think I'll wait till next week to start that. In the meantime, the road to the 2022 NEC Women's Basketball Championship is off and running, and we have a ton to catch you up on. So right now, let's take a closer look at where we stand. So much to fill you in on from non-conference play. We start, well, at the beginning. That's the proper place to start. Back on November the 13th, the reigning champion, Mount St. Mary's, raised their championship banner prior to their home game against Valley Forge at Nod Arena, following their fourth NEC tournament title that they took home last March. Now, they defeated Valley Forge in the game 102-15. to And as I'm sure you can imagine with a score like that, they rewrote their program's record books several times over in that big first victory for Coach White and big first victory at home on banner night at Nod Arena. Speaking about big non-conference wins for the Northeast Conference, we had several of them, including St. Francis, Brooklyn, knocking off Michigan State, 66-63, right before Thanksgiving, a victory over a team that was in the NCAA tournament last year, and their first ever victory against the program from the Big Ten. Kalia Edwards had 14 points to lead the way. And also, how about Wagner knocking off St. John's as part of a 7-3 and non-conference season for the Seahawks. Amelia Krista Grava had 20 points in Wagner's win over St. John's big win over a team from the Big East. In other NEC news, it was announced this winter that the NEC tournament here in 2022, one time only, will expand to include all nine eligible teams. So congratulations to everyone eligible. You've officially clinched a spot in this year's NEC tournament. They could already put out the asterisks on the NEC website and the standings page. Everybody's officially clinched a playoff spot here in 2022. Now, last year, the truncated four-team bracket saw many of the longest active tournament appearance streaks, unfortunately, come to an end, including Sacred Heart, who had been in the NEC tournament every year since the late 90s, and Bryant, who had been in the NEC tournament every year since they were first eligible in 2013. So with that, those streaks now gone, the current active tournament appearance streak is now seven straight years by SFU. And that includes this year's streak, because again, they're in, everybody's in. St. Francis will be appearing this year in their seventh straight NEC tournament. Now, last week, four actual real live conference games took place on opening weekend of league play, and the results have left the NEC standings looking like this. The Wagner Seahawks are 2-0 in NEC for the first time since 1998-1999 when they started 4-0 under head coach Tara Gallagher. Now, that team, much like this year's team, was also coming off a title game appearance the year before. That 1999 team by Coach Gallagher finished with 13 conference wins and ended up as the number three seed. Now, Sacred Heart, they start 2-0 in conference play for the third time in four years. FDU, they are 2-0 for the first time since 2012-2013. And Merrimack, 2-0 for the first time ever in the NEC standings. They had started at least 0-2 in each of their previous two years since joining the NEC. Now, in the middle of the list, Bryant and Central Connecticut State are each one up and one down. One week down, nine more to go. Lots more to go. Anything can still happen, so stay tuned. She gets buckets. And today, we want to talk about Sacred Heart Junior Sonia Smith. You know, as a freshman in 2020, I had a chance to talk with Coach Minetti, and she described Smith as really like an extra weapon, stepping in when Nikki Johnson went down and, and really doing a great job in that role. Then last year, as a sophomore, she returned as perhaps one of the most in-shape pioneers ready to go to start the season. She put in work during the spring, summer, fall 2020 quarantine, and she became really one of the more consistent players and the perfect dribble drive guard for what Coach Minetti likes to do in this Sacred Heart patented offense. This year, Sonia Smith in year three, one word, special. Back-to-back 22-point -back games to start the season, and in December, four December games the Pioneers played, Sonia Smith had including a 19-point performance against Bryant in the league opener to win a second 
player of the week. Sonia Smith in four December games was responsible for 23% of Sacred Heart scoring. That's second only to Adrian Haygood, who was responsible for 24% of the points for the Pioneers in the month of December. Now, Sacred Heart is second in the league in scoring, close to 65 points per game. And Sonia Smith has been the macaroni to Adrian Haygood's cheese, the R2-D2 to Adrian Haygood's three CPO, the French fries to Adrian Haygood's burger. I'm sure you're getting where I'm coming at here. They're a great combination. That's what I'm trying to say. Sonia Smith. She, along with Adrian Haygood, has been absolutely fantastic. Sonia Smith, a two-time NEC Player of the Week so far here in 2021-2022, and she gets buckets. Time now for our Twitter time out, and we check out the FDU Women's Basketball social media and their tweet, reunited. Get it? Reunited. Knights, get it? FDU. Reunited, Coach Ann Shamiwa, Coach Gately, Coach Lauren Holden, they all gathered before the game as the trio got back together at Rose Hill. Now, uh, a lot of ties here. Coach Ange served as the associate head coach at Fordham, longtime associate head coach under uh, Coach Gately. Lauren Holden, former student athlete, played for Coach Ange and Coach Gately at Fordham for the Rams, later served as Coach Ange's assistant coach and actually filled in for Coach Ange as the acting head coach in last year's NEC tournament semifinal for the Knights before rejoining the Rams as an assistant coach this year. Well, the band got back together, albeit on opposing benches for a non-conference clash on Sunday. Now, Coach Ange following that game sent out a follow-up tweet saying, not the result we wanted, but our team never shies away from these opportunities. Great to be back in Rose Hill and seeing all the amazing people there. Fordham is led by one of the best in the business. X's and O's are just one, but not most important part of why her teams win. Yeah, Coach Gately is the GOAT. The teacher got the better of the student this time, but we'll see what happens hopefully the next time they have a little reunion. Stats amazing. As of January the 2nd, the Wagner College Seahawks are the only team in the country. What, there's like 800 teams in the country now. They're the only team in the country that's top 10 in both three-point field goal percentage offense and three-point field goal percentage defense. On the offensive side of the ball, they're lighting up threes like fireworks lit up the sky on, the, on New Year's Eve. Wagner is shooting threes at a 38.28% clip. That's good for seventh in the entire nation. They have four games this year where, as a team, they shot over 50% from behind the arc, including their conference opener against St. Francis when they went eight for 13. Alex Cowan, Lena Losinis have been two of the hot shooters. They've taken the bulk of the threes, each connecting at an over 40% mark. And then on the other side of the ball, the Wagner defense. They allow opponents to shoot only 22.8% from three-point land, the eighth best three-point field goal percentage defense in the country. Only one team this season has shot over 30% from three-point land against Wagner. This strategy of we're going to make all our three-pointers and stop you from making yours has worked for the Seahawks. They've won eight out of 11 games so far, and they're out to a 2-0 start in league play. Stats is definitely amazing. And right now, let's take a look at what's coming up on tap. Maybe, possibly, hopefully, fingers crossed, stay tuned to northeastconference.org for any potential changes. But as it stands right now, women's basketball back on the court Thursday and Saturday. Here's what's coming up. The action headlined on Thursday by the only matchup between two 2-0 two teams. FDU and Merrimack, two of the teams we highlighted earlier out to 2-0 and starts in league play. Only one of them will be able to stay amongst the ranks of the unbeatens after their showdown in Massachusetts. 2-0 and Wagner will visit Bryant. LIU will take on Mount St. Mary's. Hopefully both teams will see their first action in league play coming up this weekend. And the St. Francis's will get together. Brooklyn at U. SFU will be opening up their home NEC schedule. Then on Saturday, what, perhaps one of the, the feature games of all season, St. Francis, Brooklyn, at Mount St. Mary's, two of the most accomplished rosters in the league this year. FDU will be at Bryant, Wagner at Sacred Heart. Now, last year in the first conference game of the season, 
Wagner went to Sacred Heart, where they were 1-19 and all time against the Pioneers at the Pitt Center. Wagner won that opener. They got that upset win, and that really set the tone for the season that was Wagner riding it all the way to the championship game. So now here they are a little over one year later, back at the scene of the crime, their statement win from a year ago that really set the tone. How will they fare this time around as they go back to a place that historically hasn't really suited them that well? LIU will be at SFU. And that'll do it for this week. Enjoy the games, everybody. I'm Craig D'Amico, and this has been NEC Women's Basketball on the Run. We'll see you right back here next week.